Hello everyone, I am Trisha Dora Borwa from the Bhopan Hazirka School of Mass Communication, Krishna Kanta Hennig State Open University. And I'd like to welcome you all once again to another informative online class. In today's online discussion, we are going to talk about Unit 3 of the paper, Traditional Folk Media, which belongs to third semester of BA program in Journalism and Mass Communication and the Krishna Kanta Hanik State Open University. In the previous two units, that is Unit 1 and 2, you were introduced briefly about what traditional media is all about. In today's particular unit, in Unit 3, we shall talk about the history and growth of traditional media in India, a brief overview of some of the traditional folk media forms of India, as well as the impact electronic media has on traditional media, and finally, you know, we shall look into some of the applications of the traditional media for the purpose of development. Now, when we talk about traditional media, what does come to our mind? Traditional media is something that has been passed down generation after generation. Now, each culture have their own traditions, which are actually given or passed on from one generation to another generation. Initially, you know, we didn't used to have electricity or other technological tools at our disposal. And thereby, we didn't have any electronic media or for that purpose, any specific, you know, media which is based on electronic forms for the purpose of entertainment or information. Now, have you really wondered, like, how the messages were communicated at that point of time when there was no such specific media? when there was no specific medium of communication, medium of channel. Well, there was indeed communication was there, but there was no such technology enhanced media. Technology enabled uh, communication tools or, you know, channels through which such messages could be communicated. In fact, such messages were communicated by ways of, you know, word of mouth publicity, by way of, you know, oral communication. And so the people, they used to adopt different ways of communication in the form of songs, there were dances, there were musics, uh, there was drama, uh, there were stories uh, and puppet shows and so and so forth. Because, you know, people, since we live in a society, so we have the innate, you know, interest or ability to communicate with one another. And so there were different mediums apart from electronic media how people used to communicate and even the, the stories which we are talking about the oral traditions oral forms that could not be documented they were spread to this different forms of media and even during these days also we have different you know such kind of communication tools at our disposal even the remote interior villages you know where you don't find the uh, proper uh, electronic media or you don't have a proper online based media to communicate people make use of such folk forms different folk art forms different folk uh, dances uh, different folk songs to communicate with one another and have you ever remembered like when you were small or like at one point of time you know your grandparents or maybe your parents they might have told you the different stories of Mahabharata and Ramayana or other moral tales, you know? And have you actually enjoyed a live performance of drama in your village or any other area where you reside? How was it narrated to you? How was it communicated to you? Now, when your grandparents or when your, for that matter, your parents they narrated the, the, the stories of our you know, folk forms and all, definitely they didn't make use of any, I guess, electronic media forms. They were told to you in face-to-face -face mode you know, in oral mode. So, you know, oral traditions, oral folk forms, you know, folk dances, uh, folk songs, folk dramas, the puppet shows, these are the other different forms to which, you know, different kinds of information are being communicated. And this fall under the umbrella of traditional folk media. Now, let us try to understand how the traditional media in India has evolved over the years. The history and growth of traditional media in India. Now, when we talk about the history, the history actually dates back to those ancient times when people they began to understand the value of civilization and organized living. And uh, folk art it was not born out of suddenly in one particular day. 
people wanted or people actually felt the need for entertainment for satisfying the creative urge to express and to remain united as a society now as far as the macbride commission report of 1982 is concerned which is actually known as many voices one world and uh, communication began it actually became institutionalized in traditional societies this particular report says and uh, interpersonal communication and public institution communication in a form of transmission of norms and customs it grew and profession categories of people in course of time it came to be responsible for the transmission of certain types of messages and when we talk about uh, the, the different categories of uh, professional people they might be you know uh, sorcerers tribal chiefs uh, traveling merchants it may be uh, they may be local administrators they may be dancers scribes and so on and so forth and in, in as far as india is concerned the folk traditions it grew parallel across the country in different forms uh, basically catering to the needs and uh, preferences of the people belonging to different age groups uh, belonging to different regions and actually giving a creative satisfaction and simple joys to the people because you see uh, we do have a uh, print media we do have electronic media and we do have online media then why do we need uh, the importance so why do we need uh, traditional folk media there is definitely important point in that traditional folk media gives us a sense of belongingness it makes us feel that we are a part of the society because traditional folk media it makes use of the traditional forms of communicating with one another unlike you know other electronic media forms because electronic media there is hardly any you know contact in in real time with one another of course these days we have you know online uh, way of you know chatting with one another we have online way of interacting with one another but having said that keeping that aside the traditional folk media it uh, makes us feel that we are co we're communicating with the person in real time because a person is in front of us and the different forms or different uh, the me the messages that have been transmitted to different folk forms are very much you know a part of the society and that makes us feel you know a part of the society now uh, according to malhan malhan is a, he he was a, a very uh, renowned uh, you know uh, a media personality and in 1985 uh, he has enlisted three or at the most four different forms of traditional media uh, the first important form which he has highlighted is the action oriented folk arts and verbal musical forms uh, you know when we talk about action oriented it means that you know the folk art forms or the different uh, folk media forms are accompanied by action like we have rural theater there is puppetry there is discourses there are folk songs the ballads storytelling and so on and so forth and the second important uh, form or a type of traditional media as given by malhan is the audience situations like festivals and fairs social ritual and ceremonial gatherings and meets because you see uh, it's not often that whatever we it's not only that we gain different forms of information we gain different knowledge only by you know you, you know getting uh, through different folk media forms or maybe through different print media forms or electronic media forms we also get uh, some amount of idea some amount of information we get by attending different festivals as well as different fairs uh, different ceremonial gatherings because you know when we attend the different festivals and fairs we get brief idea of what the situation is all about the different actions that take place in in the, at such a place or such a uh, such an occasion it enlightens us it gives us a, a bird's eye view of what the situation might be third important type which malhan has enlisted is are uh, the opinion leaders like the village heads okay now in most of the villages especially in rural areas we have the village chef shifter is there the village heads are there so what they do they act like opinion leaders now opinion leaders the main function is like you know they try to inform the general public as a whole they give their own opinion because the information they collect from the different media channels they use it for their own purpose and then they try to percolate 
that particular message down to the bottom level and they disseminate that particular message to the people at the lower level so they they play the important role of an opinion rate leader lastly we have the rural arts and crafts traditional designs and miscellaneous motifs now when we talk about rural arts and crafts and because art the crops of different regions are different for example for instance if you talk about some we have our own traditional art and crafts if you talk up if you talk about the art and crafts of rajasthan they have their own indigenous you know art and crafts so the different traditional designs the different motifs you know they kind of bring out a different identity of the particular state or the region so rural arts and crafts are also a one type of you know tradition folk media form now this different traditional media forms which malhan has and so they they not only give a sense of information but they also provide us a type of mass entertainment and they serve as indigenous tools of interpersonal and intergroup communication more specifically in the rural areas and as uh, time has gone by in due course of time different regions develop specialized regional folk media like the tamasha maharashtra the jatra bengal and yakshagana of karnataka which actually acted as communication channels for heralding the reform social changes and development in the indian society and uh, this different folk forms we have different folk dances different folk songs uh, folk theater uh, puppetry uh, the, the tradition art forms you know they all have been used at some point or other for social cultural religious as well as political purposes and uh, not only that it also they have have been used for providing pure entertainment or purpose also now and you know this different folk forms the different types of traditional folk media forms it's not that you know they cater to a particular age group because they are they have a kind of they are so much indigenous in nature and the different socially relevant messages which different folk forms they try to disseminate are so much related to our own lifestyle our own way of living so that makes us feel that we have a sense of belongingness or we we feel that we belong to whatever message that this different folk forms they try to disseminate and traditional media basically it's a beautiful area of dance there is music uh there is songs there are prayers there are different moral lessons to know this epic there is mythology and uh, when and one another important fact about this traditional folk media forms is that most of the time you know the medium of communication is their own native language or in their own regional language that hardly there are one or two instances where you know english has been used as a medium of communication because you know usually people feel more connected when uh, such kind of information is passed down or in disseminated to the people in their own native languages in their own regional language so definitely people will not it's not only the people will be able to understand a better way the the topic which such kind of messages are being disseminated but the people also will feel okay our own society is being depicted in such a way that because we are part of the society so my lifestyle is being depicted in this way so i will be more interested in whatever message this different traditional folk media forms tries to convey to us now uh, there is another uh, very senior folk media scholar his name is balwan gargi uh he has actually defined traditional folk media form as you know he says in his own words quote unquote that uh, folk media represents the people in their natural habitat with all the contradictions and multifarious activities it gives a glimpse of the style of speech music dance dress and wisdom so what he ex- exactly means is that it represents the people folk media doesn't only represent that you know people are working in some place people might be working in their respective uh, workplace people might be at their own residences people might have gone for some uh, for for visiting some other place so they might be at their own respective place doing their different activities and folk media represents the people at their own natural setting okay 
it shows their way of the style of uh, the way the, how they're communicating it shows their way of communicating to the medium of dance to the medium of music what dress code they are using you know what information they are passing down from one generation so this this different uh, areas or this different you know multifarious activities are being highlighted by the folk media now let us try to see some of the important you know uh, traditional folk media forms of india now first of course we have the folk theater and uh, folk theater is a it's very it's a composite form in all the regions it combines dance music uh, art dialogues poetry and even folklore and uh, in some places the themes which they are taken you know for the you know folk folk theater performances they taken from mythological characters there might be mythological stories or different folk tales or legends and all it they try to you know disseminate some kind of you know social messages and or sometimes and sometimes it's been satirized com contemporary scenario as well for instance you know in north part of india we have the notanki and the ram lila uh, they are very popular folk theater forms and as far as eastern india is concerned we have the jatra and uh, you know as and uh, farther towards east in assam we have the ankya nath so these are some of the very popular folk theater forms and uh, another important you know of course it's there are other different folk theater forms as well in the entire country we have in gujarat we have the bhavai and then uh, to uh, towards you know in tamash also we have then uh, notanki uh, basically it's another folk theater form which is performed in north india in open stages and it also draws narratives from epics as well as folklore and heroic tales and they actually used to make social and political comments and on the other hand jatra jatra is very much popular in bengal orissa and assam and it actually got its name from the you know nomadic nature of the performers who travel from place to place they give different performances and because the nomads you know jatra means you're moving from one place to another literally translated and so from that particular action from that particular activity the name jatra has been coined and uh, this form it got it became very much popular among the communist uh, sp more specifically to spread the social socially relevant messages in pr both pre and post independence india then the second Im important folk form or tradition folk form of india is uh, they are the folk songs now i think uh, we don't need much introduction about the folk songs uh, i think by now you must have understood what folk songs are all about and uh, as far as india is concerned we have a very rich collection of folk songs and um, uh, professor uh, sham parmar uh, he is a renowned you know person belonging to this field of media and journalism and he has actually divided the different folk forms into following types okay uh, he has said the first important time which he has focused upon are the bhakti songs or the devotional songs with uh, which is, which has very uh, strong links to classical music then we have the ceremonial songs uh, or the other which include other seasonal songs also, or ritual works and all and the ceremonial songs basically the, those are sung during certain ceremonies and all for instance you know uh, the birth of a child or maybe you know to celebrate the six months uh, completion of the birth of a child when the the child is being given you know the first few morsels of food to eat so during certain ceremonies and all or maybe even during marriage functions and all during marriage ceremonies and all so those ceremonies which has some kind of value or maybe which has some kind of relation to the indian society uh highlighting the, any any particular occasion then during those uh, occasions also such uh, ceremonial songs are being uh, sung very uh, you know uh, very occasionally then of course we have the tribal songs so these are the some of the three important uh, folk songs that are being highlighted and uh, there are also other important popular folk songs which includes the bol and the uh, bhatiali of bengal the duharas and the garba of gujarat and of course in assam we have the bihu so you know the 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 main objective of such folk songs is that 
they not they not only serve as a purpose of entertainment they not only give a, a sense of happiness but they have a, a kind of you know relevance to the society now what is that relevance they try to integrate different issues that that actually takes place in society and they try to you know disseminate or they try to focus on those issues to the different folk songs because the different folk songs they express socially significant messages and actually they have been used to foster a sense of national pride and integration the third important form of folk songs are the narrative forms now what are narratives actually narratives means like when you uh, talk about folk songs folk songs now it's not only about there is music in it there are lyrics in it someone is singing the song but sometimes the folk songs can be in a form of narrative forms where someone is reading out the the different lyrics or someone is narrating out the the different story behind that you know occasion so th those falls on the narrative forms and uh, poetic forms with a strong narrative element they have actually proved to be a particularly useful form from the point of view of communication of messages the lastly we have the religious discourses religious discourses or popularly be known as hari katha that is of course it's known by different names like katha we have kirtan we have uh, katha kalakshepam and pravachan it 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 involves a kind of dramatic exposition of stories and songs and uh, generally it is seen in such type of religious discourses the the performer or the person who is actually trying to convey the different issues he is known as a kathakar actually and he is actually expected to have a good amount of knowledge of the different scriptures because he'll be narrating those, those scriptures in on in different occasions because people will be there so when the uh the person who is actually narrating this uh you know uh, such kind of stories to the general public he or she should have a very good amount of knowledge about the scriptures about the music about the qualities of a good actor as well as a, uh, you know a proper knowledge of local customs because suppose someone from bengal comes to assam and he or she tries to you know, engage in religious discourses so obviously the person from bengal must understand what is happening in assam he, without you know he or she if he starts you know you know uh, speaking on different religious issues without even considering the sentiments of the local people then that would not be uh, healthy in the raw in the long run so a proper knowledge of the local customs along with a proper knowledge of the scriptures as was music is very essential you know to uh, make the religious discourse very appealing to the general public and then we have the folk dances of course uh, from the term itself we can understand folk dances means uh, they are those dance those dance forms which you know try to uh, imbibe or try to convey the different issues or different socially relevant issues or different folk forms and folk dance forms for instance you know uh, we take about let's let's take the example bihu dance from assam you know Bihu dance in upper Assam is a little bit different than the lower Assam, but nevertheless they convey the same amount of meaning. And uh, Bihu actually signifies the, the essence of being an Assamese, it, the essence of the state of Assam. It signifies the the culture and beauty of Assam. It signifies the natural beauty of Assam. So every nuances, every step in this particular folk dance performance, it glorifies the cultural. Uh, heritage or it glorifies the cultural beauty of Assam. So different dance forms, different folk dance forms, they have such kind of, you know, uh, it it tries to disseminate uh, such kind of uh, meaning to the society. And uh, su such traditional folk dance forms are fundamentally very much similar, but of course th they have different names and are performed in different styles. Okay, they're different style of performing. What what may be you know what might see someone see the uh, the bihu dance performance as seen in the lower part of Assam might not be a bit similar to that what the, that one uh, visualizes in the upper part of Assam. So there might be some differences, minor differences, but nevertheless uh, the amount of meaning or whatever content they try to convey is it remains the same. 
then we have the traditional motifs and symbols now as as a layman I, i'm sure you must have seen you know uh, in most of the houses most more specifically in the rural areas you might have seen you know people used to make little, little small dots of rangoli with uh, different colors and uh, outside their homes even or even during festive occasions you know more specifically i think during diwalis and all i think most of us we used to make the alpana you know by uh, trying to draw it on the veranda of our house we try to welcome goddess lakshmi so this kind of you know um, occasions when we try to you know kind of generate we try to why we do such kind of patterns why why are we engaging such kind engaging such in doing such kind of symbols and motifs and all we have a different folk dancers we have different folk forms we de- we do have different uh, folk theater forms to you know give us a sense of entertainment to uh, to spread the knowledge to give us some kind of information but why do we en- still we engage in such kind of traditional uh, in drawing out such kind of traditional symbols and motifs because uh, this is a part of our everyday life and uh, this this different beautiful patterns which actually are made on the threshold of the house and they actually it's 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 a kind of belief it helps us like to uplift the spirit or maybe ward off evil energies and give protection and uh, as far as india is concerned people reveal many such kind of symbols ranging from those which are very much simple kind of symbols to some very complex you know kind of symbols and uh, which might be in the form of figures and ritual drawings and so on and so forth so that is how you know v- people they try to communicate to traditional motifs and symbols Be- because people want that uh, through such traditions they want the tradition to remain alive because in this particular age of electronic media most of the time we find that uh, such traditional forms of communication have actually come down to certain degree so people want to keep them alive people want to uh, make it a, a kind of uh, you know to uplift or to take it to another level the different traditional fo- forms and that is why they try to engage in such kind of you know uh, different folk forms then we have the paintings now paintings are also one of the important mediums of traditional media because you know painting is not only something which is colorful so you know it's not that i have painted a uh, you know picture of an apple or i have painted an a, uh, a picture of uh, you know a scenery of you know a person you know riding a bike or maybe a person you know uh, swimming in the river it's not that there. there has to be some kind of inherent meaning to that okay because it try to highlight certain important social issues in the earlier times you know how the primitive uh, man they used to communicate you know they used to you know draw they used to paint uh, in those huge caves they used to paint the pictures of animals being hunted they used to you know d- uh, draw with the help of the uh, sharp edged stone on the rocks and all they used to show the which way the animals can be seen or how the hunting takes place so this kind of you know uh, different communication uh, the way of communicating uh, certain issues a way of communicating certain kind of any occasion people used to take the help of painting and it's not that painting they used to use different colored paints or they there used to be different kind of colors while you know drawing out such kind of uh, you know issues or such kind of uh, instances it was just simple they used to just take a you know sharp edged rock or maybe a sharp edge you know maybe uh, some something which is very sharp in nature and they used to just you know carve out a, a kind of any image that might come to their mind and through that particular image they used to communicate and from that point of time to the present time we have actually come a long way and uh, at that point of time of course the medium of communication was basically to inform the people that were uh, about what exactly what activity they are being engaged of course now the situation has actually changed it's not about you now we don't we don't go about you know uh, you know c- c- painting on different rocks or different caves and all and inform the people where we are that's just a different issue but the thing is that that the the communication is still there the communication still prevalent even though the nature of communication or the the issues to which we are communicating the way of painting might have changed but the primary focus remains the same okay now uh, let us try to understand look at some of the examples of traditional paintings 
which actually symbolizes deep meaning. Uh, now we have the like traditional paintings of Madhya Pradesh, uh, especially the wall paintings of Bundal Khan uh, in Chhattisgarh and uh, in Gondwana in Neymar Malwa. They are the living expressions of people actually who are linked with the socio cultural environment of the area. Then, uh, the, for instance, the Bhils and the Bhila, Bhilala tribes of uh, Madhya Pradesh. You know, they used to paint myths that's related to the creation called Pithora paintings. You know, they used to carve out uh, different paintings on the horses, on elephants, on tigers, and birds, and gods, man, objects of daily life, and so on and so forth. And the Gondwana region as well, there used to be unmatched creative vision has been shown by the Gon and the Pardhan tribes who have actually impressed audiences at different exhibitions in Japan, in France, in Australia, and in other countries as well. Then let's come to puppetry. Now when we talk about puppetry, what comes to our mind? Puppetry, they are a, a kind of, uh, it tries to not only entertain the people, it tries to give us, you know, a sense of understanding of any particular issue because it also conveys social messages and generally when we t uh, when we talk about puppetry in, in india we have three important types first we have the string puppets then we have the rod puppets then finally we have the glove puppets and uh, the person who actually manages the different puppets he can be a single man performing the shows or a group of artists or a family of artists who are performing it at different places using the colorful puppets and the different themes of this puppets or for this different puppetry shows are also different as 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 per the region and the traditions